Hello and welcome to our Remembrance Sunday service. I know for many of you this day will be marked by standing by uh, the cenotaph, maybe placing wreaths or poppies in remembrance, and we would have organisations and bagpipes and all the things that we normally expect on this day. Sadly, because of COVID and because of the lockdown, we are unable to do that this year. But it doesn't stop us having a time of remembrance. And so this service will be uh, a service of remembrance and the hymns and the words, and maybe even we have two poems as well uh, in the service, they would reflect that. And I hope that even if we aren't able to meet together outside, that we can still have a moment to remember here and now. So let's begin our service. We meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people together may live in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember them with thanksgiving and sorrow, those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. We're going to have our first hymn, O oh God, our help in ages past. bells for these who die as cattle. Only the monstrous anger of the guns. Only the stuttering rifles rapid rattle can patter out their hasty horizons. No mockeries now for them, no prayers, no bells, nor any voice of mourning save the choirs, the shrill, demented choirs of wailing shells and bugles calling for them from sad shires. Candles may be held to speed them all. Not in the hands of boys, but in their eyes shall shine the holy glimmer of goodbyes. The pallor of girls' brows shall be their pall. Their flowers the tenderness of patient minds. And each slow dusk 
a drawing down of blinds. We're going to have now a time of confession. It's always right as we come to worship that we also come mindful of the things that we need to be sorry for, things that we've said or thought or done that we know have been harmful to others. And so let's just have a moment quiet just to bring those things to mind. And maybe you'd like to say this prayer with me. O oh God, our Father, we have sinned against you in thought and deed. We have not loved you with all our hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. Have mercy upon us, we pray. Cleanse us from our sins and help us to overcome our faults. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on all of us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Amen. And let's say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Just before we have our time of remembrance, we're going to sing again the hymn, Abide With Me. It's a different arrangement this time. It's sung by a young girl. Uh, and actually you may just want to listen as she sings.
We're going to now have our time of remembrance. The familiar exhortation will be said and there will be a period of silence um, in between the last post and the Rivali. So here in the presence of God, let us again remember all who have fallen in war in silence, calling to mind the love of those we see no more, who yet are one with us in the communion of saints. They shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
Ever-living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to now have our Bible readings. The reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting at verse 13. The Lord's coming. Our friends, we want you to know the truth about those who have died, so that you will not be sad, as are those who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will take back with Jesus those who have died believing in him. What we are teaching you now is the Lord's teaching. We who are alive on the day the Lord comes will not go ahead of those who have died. There will be a shout of command, the archangel's voice, the sound of God's trumpet, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died believing in Christ will rise to life first. Then we who are living at that time will be gathered up along with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. So then, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Bible reading is from Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13. The parable of the ten virgins. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later the others also came, Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some years ago, I attended the funeral of one of my uncles. My dad was the eldest of seven children, and they grew up in the port of Goul in Yorkshire. And at the funeral, my dad was given an old photograph, and, and this is it. It was taken around the year 1930. Apparently, there used to be a man who would turn up every now and again and take a photograph of people in their back alleyways. And the photograph shows a scene of an alleyway between the backs of terraced houses. And on the picture are lots of children, they're all smiling um, at the camera. Now my dad looked at the photo and he could see himself as a small lad and, and that's in there circled. Uh, my dad was born in 1921. It was quite strange looking at him as, as a small lad. He saw some of his younger brothers there as well and also other friends who recognised, all of whom sadly, of course, are now passed away. I really regret not talking to him more because he pointed out to two children on this photograph and I can't really remember which children they are, but both of them were his best friends. One of them grew up um, only to lose his life on the beaches of Dunkirk uh, soon after uh, the start of the Second World War. My dad was a sailor, he went to sea, and he earned more money 
than his friend who was in the army. So Medard would often send him some of his wage. Medard pointed to another boy. Again, I can't exactly remember which one. He was wearing shorts and his knees were dirty. This was Medard's best friend. When the Second World War began, they were both merchant seamen based in Ghoul. And quite soon there was news that there was some action going to happen down in Liverpool. There were going to be these fleets going across to America to bring back supplies. And they were looking for crews to man these ships. My dad's friend signed up. Uh, and my dad was going to go. But he took the advice of his captain to, to wait. So dad didn't go. He went later on to Liverpool. Of course his best friend did. And as you can imagine... He lost his life in the very first trip out of Liverpool as a U-boat sunk the ship that he was on. I know my dad always remembered these friends. And on many remembering Sundays, he would shed tears for them. He would find a cenotaph to stand by and remember. As my dad got older, he would tell me that his memory wasn't what it used to be. At times he'd forget what he walked into the kitchen for. But his memory of the war years was sharp. He said that one day I would know what he was talking about. Of course, I'm sharing all this with you because today is Remembrance Sunday. I remember when I was at school, I was captivated by the poets of the First World War. We had one of those poets, uh, Wilfred Owen, read to us at the beginning of this service. And people like Owen and Siegfried Sassoon brought to life not only the horrible reality of war, but also a real attempt to find and understand God within all of that, within the nightmare of those trenches. Where is God? And it was reading through those poems um, that brought home to me the real need to remember. And it's through those poems that memories are kept alive. There have been lots of talk about the First World War and the mistakes made by the generals. Mistakes in tactics which made trench warfare futile. And many lives were lost as a result. But futile or not, the shortcomings of the generals take nothing away from the heroism and the courage of those who lived and died in those miserable trenches. And in the horrors of the battlefields that people like Wilfred Owen and Siegfried Sassoon and others graphically describe. And here in the comfort and the security of the 21st century, I can't begin to imagine what they went through in the minds of those men who fought that war, laying down their lives for family, for friends, for country. These thoughts of sacrifice and remembering bring me to the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made for all on his battlefield at Calvary. We meet in the context of a God who loves, who does not want war, who does not want people to be in conflict with each other. We live here in the context of a God who did something about this, sending his son to give his life, not only for his friends, but also for his enemies. As God, Jesus didn't have to experience human suffering, but he did so for our sakes. But we would never have known this had it not been for the memories of people which ultimately became the Gospels. The memories found within the books like Matthew and Mark and Luke and John are what enable us to know about the one who brings us eternal life. Remembering is important. Hearing the stories of those who lived through those times is important. Why? Well, for me, they're best summed up by the former Bishop of Birmingham, J. L. Wilson, who in the Second World War was a Japanese prisoner of war. And he recommends three thoughts for us all to carry in our hearts on Remembrance Sunday. He says we should be thankful for the deliverance and the sacrifice of others. We should have penitence for human evil and sin. And we should dedicate ourselves to work for peace, for reconciliation and justice in the world. This applies both to the lessons of war and to the war against sin and the devil and the great victory of Jesus Christ. 
He says we should be thankful for our deliverance and the sacrifice of others. If you read the New Testament, there is this thread of sacrifice from the death of John the Baptist to the exile of the Apostle John and Patmos. I doubt there is one person we meet in the New Testament uh, who knew nothing of suffering. We know so well the sacrifice that Jesus made on that cross at Calvary. But there is also the sacrifice made by the disciples and many others who came to know Jesus. And with only the words, come follow me, they left everything. Family, work, community, and they follow Jesus. And even then I imagine that Jesus would have known the sacrifices that they would have to make so that this good news, this news of salvation and peace and love could be spread. People like Andrew was probably crucified in a place called Achaia. James was killed by the sword by Herod Agrippa. John, as I said, was probably exiled on the island of Patmos. Peter, probably killed in Rome, the same time as Paul, around about 68 to 70 AD. The history of Christianity, just like the history of the world, is one of suffering and sacrifice. Suffering comes as a result of evil that is in the world. But sacrifice comes from the gift of love, which ultimately comes from God. We owe so much to the thousands of men and women and children who, because of their faith, have given their lives so that God's love is able to overcome evil. We should be thankful for that and remember those sacrifices. We should be penitent. Bishop Wilson said, for human sin and evil. Jesus' first words to the world were these, the time has come and the kingdom of God is near. Turn away from your sin and believe in the good news. War and conflict always come as a result of a failure to realize human sin. We are constantly guilty of ignoring the planks of wood in our own eyes. We view each other as being less than what God has made us. If we were all willing to acknowledge our sin, if we were all willing to repent, if we were all willing to forgive and receive forgiveness, then there would be no place for evil in this world. There will be no place for war and conflict in this world. Whenever we point our fingers at others for the actions that they do, we should do so realizing that there are also fingers pointing back at us. Bishop Wilson Dead said we should dedicate ourselves to work for peace, reconciliation and justice in the world. It is said that all it takes for evil to prevail is for good people to do nothing. These disciples were the first of many, many who answered that call of Jesus and committed their lives to bringing the kingdom of God into the world. And the writers of the New Testament all answered that call. And through them, the Holy Spirit has worked to bring us those words. Throughout the past 2,000 years, we have seen so many people who have answered that call. For many, it has meant terrible suffering. Because of them, the good news prevails. We too are called to do the same. I always feel a sense of inadequacy when preaching on Remembrance Sunday. But the words of Bishop Wilson encourage me because they are words that speak into my life and experience as I'm sure they do into yours. I want to end with some words from an elderly minister reflecting on the things that he has seen in his life. He says this, there are dozens of ways to deal with the evil and several ways to conquer it. All of them are facets of the truth that the only ultimate way to conquer evil is to let it be smothered within a willing, living human being. When it is absorbed there like blood in a sponge or a spear in one's heart, it loses its power and it goes no further. The healing of evil can be accomplished only by the love of individuals. A willing sacrifice is required. I do not know how this occurs, but I know that it does. And whenever this happens, there is a slight shift in the balance of power in the world. Power, no matter how well intended, tends to cause suffering. Love, being vulnerable, absorbs it. 
and power and love met on a hill called Calvary, where God renounced one for the sake of the other. So as we remember, remember the calling of those first disciples, remember the horrors of war, remembering the courage of those who live and die through it, we have to also remember the cross and the sacrifice of Jesus. The deaths of my dad's best friends were not in vain, for in a small but significant way, they show that even though we are an imperfect and sinful people, we still reflect some of that perfect and sinless love of Jesus Christ, who was so willing to give his life for many. Amen. In this part of our service now we come to a response. It's right that as, the, as we meet to worship, especially Remembrance Sunday, we should do so with the intention to leave this time of worship intending to bring peace and reconciliation to our world. War should cease, conflict should come to an end. Sadly we know that it doesn't. But as Christians we should always seek to find that peace in our world. So let us now commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. And please respond by saying the words that are in the red uh, font. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? We will. Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? We will. Will you work for a just future for all humanity? We will. Merciful God, we offer to you the fears in us that have not yet been cast out by love. May we accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of all people and live lives of justice, courage and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. And now we're going to have our time of prayer. The response to the prayers for this Remembrance Sunday is hear our prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in ways of freedom, justice and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who bear arms on behalf of the nation, that we may have discipline and discernment, courage and compassion, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm, that you will turn the hearts of all to kindness and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the homeless, that in all their trials they may know your love and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend you to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence. Through Christ our Lord, Amen.
So we've come to the end of our service. And I do wish you a good week. And of course, as Remembrance Day comes on the 11th again, there is an opportunity there to stop and to remember. Let me just close now with a prayer of blessing. God grants to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you, and those you love, now and always. Amen.